Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and those of you who watch our videos regularly have probably already guessed that today is not going to be one of our regular cold process soap videos due to the presence of the rather wonderful slow cooker. Yes, today we thought we would try something that we have never done before. We fancy doing something a little bit different because we have been making soap all week and we wanted a bit of a change so we are going to attempt to make clear melt and pour soap from scratch today so we are making our own base melt and pour this is something that we have never ever done before so it could go horribly wrong um, obviously not having done it before i can't teach you i can only show you what i am doing what i can tell you is that we are following the recipe from soaping 101 on making a clear melt and pour base and I will link to her video in the description as well so if you guys want to watch that and see how she does it because she is much more of an expert than me then please do so um, and she also lists all the ingredients and everything in her video so I won't be listing the ingredients in our description today but I will be linking to her video. Um, I've had a look through the process, I have watched her video a few times and it seems relatively straightforward. There are a couple of steps that are a little bit kind of nerve-wracking. The first one is that you actually need to add the lye into warm or hot water today, which is something you never ever ever do with cold processed soap. You do not add lye into hot water. So today we are adding lye into hot water which is, yeah, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking, but I'm sure we will be okay because we will obviously be following the correct safety procedures. There are a couple of ingredients I haven't used before. Propylene glycol is one of them. Um, and the other one is, I can't remember. Let me have a think. Actually, I don't think there is another ingredient that we haven't used before. There are things like glycerin um, and alcohol that are being used. Um, we haven't used them in soap before, but we have used them in other cosmetic products that we make. So yeah, the main new ingredient is the propylene glycol, and that is the ingredient that should hopefully help to make the melt and pour base remeltable. So let's jump in, try and make some melt and pour and see how it goes. This will be a two part video. Today's video is going to be us making it and next Friday we shall be doing another video where if this goes well we will hopefully be remelting it and turning it into kind of a coloured fragranced melt and pour soap. So fingers crossed that this will be a two part video because it will be successful. Let's make some melt and pour soap. So the very first thing we are going to do today is remove the lid from our slow cooker and we are going to turn the slow cooker to high, which is this way. And one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So turn the slow cooker on to high. And then we are going to add in our first two ingredients, which are coconut oil, which I'm just going to scrape in now. And some steric acid. Now, if like us, you are a palm free company, um, then just be aware that a lot of steric acid is actually derived from palm oil. We have managed to source a palm free steric acid and this is from the soap kitchen here in the UK. If you are not going to the soap kitchen and you are going somewhere else, do check if you are palm free that it is not derived from palm oil because I say lots of steric acid is. This one from the soap kitchen is the only one I've managed to find in the UK so far that isn't palm derived. I'm sure there's, other, I'm sure there's others, I just haven't found them. And now we just need to wait for these to melt. So now we have moved on to the proper making part. I've obviously got my gloves and my goggles on and I am just gonna melt this down and then it needs to be between 150 and 215 degrees Fahrenheit according to the Soaping 101 tutorial. So I'm just sort of going to leave it there now, just doing its thing until it has fully melted and got up to the correct temperature.
So the coconut oil and stearic acid are now melted and are sitting at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. So I have warmed the distilled water and that is at 165 Fahrenheit. So hopefully those temperatures are gonna be close enough together. Now this is the bit that scares me. This is where we need to add in our lye to our distilled water. But obviously this is hot water and this is likely going to bubble and boil because it's gonna get even hotter when I add in our lye. So I'm gonna add our lye very slowly and very carefully. So I'm just going in one spoonful at a time and you can see it's starting to kind of bubble and boil straight away. This is such an alien concept to me because obviously with soap making, cold process soap making, I've always been taught you do not add lye to hot water but when making mountain pour you do. And that one did bubble up quite a lot. So what I'm gonna do now is just take it over to my sink just to be safe. And I'm gonna continue adding in the rest of the lye when it is safely in my sink, just in case for any reason it does bubble over. So I'll get the rest of the lye added in, then we'll be back. So after taking it away for safety, the rest of it added in absolutely fine. And now we are just going to add it in to the oils and then we are just gonna to stir to combine. And I know when I watched the other lady stirring it in, it reached a kind of strange sort of looking consistency, which it seems to be doing with us as well. So just mixing it all in. Obviously stainless steel utensils because we are using the lye. And I'm just gonna kind of whisk it all carefully together. After this we're just going to cook it for two to three minutes to bring it kind of to the apple sauce kind of consistency that you are used to if you make a hot process soap. So that is what we are looking for this to do next. So it feels like we've been waiting for this for ages. In reality, it's probably only been about 10 minutes. But in the Soaping 101 video, I only took her about three minutes to get to the next stage, which I still don't think we are actually at. Whether that is because her uh, initial temperatures were slightly higher than ours or differences in the temperatures of the slow cookers that we used, I don't know. We are just starting to get some translucent bits now, which is what we want. So we're just gonna leave it to cook a little bit longer until it goes a little more translucent and then we shall move on to step three for whatever step the next step is. So we have left this for another 10 minutes and to be honest, it's not doing a whole lot. So whether that is because I'm being impatient or not, I don't know, but we're gonna move on to the next step now because it doesn't look like it's gonna change much more. And the next step is gonna be adding in the alcohol. We are just using isopropyl alcohol. In the Soaping 101 video, she does use Everclear. We can get Everclear here in the UK, but it's about 40 pounds for a one litre bottle. And I wasn't willing to spend that just for an experiment. So we're just using regular isopropyl. And the guidance for this was pour it slow and stir it quick. So that is exactly what I'm gonna try and do. So as you can see, our mix does look very dry. So I'm just gonna see what happens when we add in the alcohol. Pour slow, stir quick. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> my goodness. It's like a Friday night out from my youth. Whew, that is quite alcoholy. Right, this doesn't necessarily look like hers did at this stage. But we're going to keep going because this is an experiment. At the minute, it looks like it's going to be a failed experiment, but you never know till the end, do you? 
Right, the next step is just to leave this for another couple of minutes to cook and then add in some more bits. So two minutes on now and we're going to move on to adding the next ingredients which are vegetable glycerine and propylene glycol. Uh, much like steric acid, propylene glycol, I believe, can be derived from palm oil. We bought ours from Mystic Moments and it didn't specifically say that it wasn't so I had to look through the SDS sheet and right at the bottom I did find a section where it did confirm that their propylene glycol is palm oil free. Obviously, if you are palm oil free, then you may need to check data sheets just to check that it is not a palm derived propylene glycol. Right, let's take the lid off and add this in. It's really not doing a lot. <laughs> so going in now and sort of just mixing it together. I'm hoping that at some point these big lumps are kind of going to melt um, because otherwise we're going to have a very strange looking soap. Um, it just seems very dry, that's all I can say at the minute, very, very dry. Obviously we are adding in liquid now and we have got some more liquid to add in in a minute as well. So hopefully that will help it to kind of just melt down together. We shall see. That's the joy of trying something for the first time, isn't it? You never quite know how it's going to turn out. Sometimes you can get things right first time. And sometimes it takes a few tries and sometimes no matter how hard you try, you can just never get something to work. Right, just mixing in now. I'm just going to leave it for a little while just to see if it will start to kind of melt together. And then we are going to add in what I believe is our final ingredient. So it has now kind of melted. Um, looking a bit different than it was. Not quite sure again if this is right or not. We're now going to add the final ingredient, which is our sugar solution. This is two parts sugar to one part water. It did say you could use sorbitol if you wanted to. Um, this has apparently a slightly brown tint to it, uh, but I'm not fussed by that and I didn't want to be buying any kind of additional ingredients that I could avoid buying so I went with the sugar solution option. We now mix this in and then we need to wait for it to melt <laughs> and then apparently that, that, that is it. Um, yeah quite an interesting consistency now we shall see if it does melt and if it does we can then pour it into a mold and our melt and pour will be completed but to be honest at this point, I'm thinking it's probably easier if you want to use mountain pour to just buy it in the shops. <laughs> oh. So after probably 15, 20 minutes or so, we have actually somehow managed to melt everything together. Uh, and now all we need to do is decant it into one of our silicon moulds and that will be our attempt at mountain pour soap completed. So let's get it in the mould now. So Wayne is going to help me with this bit because I don't trust my own uh, pouring ability. So we've got a mould here, soap here, and Wayne is now, hopefully, going to pour it for me. That's warm! <laughs> you alright? Yowza! <laughs> you done? Yeah, I think Sorry. so. I'll move this. Yeah. <laughs> Hot. I think it's hot. Right, melt and pour, hopefully completed. Let me show you what it looks like now. So here is our melt and pour. I'm actually going to spritz it a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol and that should hopefully take away these air bubbles that are forming. And there we have our first attempt at a melt and pour soap base. So as I said, this is going to be a two-part video, so we're going to leave this to firm up now. We're going to leave the video here for today, and then next Friday you will see the finished Melt and Pour soap. And then if it has been successful, fingers crossed, not holding out a huge amount of hope, but we will see. We will then try and remelt it and maybe colour it, fragrance it, and show you how it can be turned into a uh, Melt and Pour soap with colours and scent. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Um, I say it has been a bit of a different one for us and it hasn't been 
especially easy, which you probably picked up on uh, throughout the video anyway. Hopefully it will work, but we just don't know. So enjoy your weekend. If you enjoy our videos, please do consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment, and we will see you next week to show you how this one has turned out. Bye for now.